I would be so privileged if you would allow me for the few minutes that you've given me to be your mom, your grandma, your great grandma. <laughs> I have four generations. What a joy for me to be here with you. And with your permission, I'm going to take you on a ride. I want to share with you what my mom told me that truly, truly changed my life, the past, and the present. The time is 1944. My dad, my sister Magda, and I, and my mom, we were on our way to Auschwitz. And my mom held me, and this is what she said. She said, we don't know where we're going. We don't know what's going to happen. Just remember, no one can take away from you what you put here in your own mind. And this is exactly what happened. We arrived in Auschwitz. I saw the sign. I didn't know where I was. My father was separated. And I stood in front of Dr. Mengele, the angel of death. He pointed my mom to the go to the left and my sister and I to the right. I followed my mom and he grabbed me, looked me in the eye, that I never forget that look. And he said, you're gonna see your mother very soon. She's just gonna take a shower. And promptly threw me on the other side, which meant life. I suffered so many years from survivor's guilt and shame, wondering why me, there were people who were so much prettier than I was. I had two very beautiful sisters, and after two beautiful sisters, my parents wanted a son, and guess what happened? They got me, and I was the runt in my family, my sisters, took me for a walk and they blindfolded me because I was cross-eyed. Today I speak at schools. I'm really guiding the precious children not to allow anyone to define who you are. You're beautiful because God doesn't make junk. And so here I was asking, it was called Birkenau. I asked one of the inmates, when will I see my mother? She pointed at the chimney. And she said to me very coldly, she's burning there. So there was no help from the outside, but I still had my mind and my sister Magda. She was the pretty one in my family, the sexy one. And when we were completely shaved, she came to me with hair in her palms and said, how do I look? It's a Hungarian woman's question. We're pretty vain. And I knew and I discovered Auschwitz was all about discovery traits. I never thought it was possible. And instead of telling Magda how she really looked, I found something, something that she still had left. And I said to her, Magda, you have such beautiful eyes. And you know, I really didn't see it well when you had your hair covered, in covering your eyes. So I hope that you're going to really tonight Pay attention the kind of words that you put in your mind so you can empower someone and see in which way I can be your guide tonight. Dr. Mangala appeared in our barracks and looked for the talents and my friends volunteered me because I was a student of ballet. I uh, was a good gymnast. I danced for the president of Hungary, Admiral Horty. And I found myself in front of Dr. Mengele dancing. And again, my mind was with me when I was able to check out. And I pretended that the music was Tchaikovsky 
and I was then seeing the Romeo and Juliet at the Budapest Opera House. He gave me a piece of bread, which I shared with my girls. Life was very difficult in Auschwitz because we never knew what's going to happen next. We didn't know when we took a shower, whether water is going to come out or gas is going to come out. And then what we had to do is again somehow survive. I remember we stood in line every morning, 4 o'clock, and I, I began to fantasize about my boyfriend. And I said to myself, if I survive today, then tomorrow I'll be free. Tomorrow, tomorrow, always looking ahead. And I learned to say, instead of why me, what now and what next? I had that tremendous curiosity that really was so powerful that I was able to make it day by day. But we had to be committed to each other. Otherwise, we never would have made it. Cooperation was the name of the game, not competition, not domination, because all we had was each other then, and all we have is each other now. In December, they took me out of Auschwitz. I became a slave laborer, and I was transported to a place called Mauthausen to enter a death march. And in the death march, when you stopped, you were shot right away. And while I was just about to collapse myself, and my friends who I shared the bread with, they came and they formed the chair with their arms and they carried me so I wouldn't die. Isn't that amazing that the worst conditions can bring out the best in us? I was liberated May 4th, it's coming up, 1945, by the 71st Infantry. I was so privileged that I am working now with the military, doing work with PTSD. I was invited to Fort Carson, Colorado City, and I realized when I arrived that is the home of the 71st Infantry. You see how life comes around. And now today, as I'm standing here in front of you, I can tell you I have nothing but gratitude. We don't seem to appreciate sometimes what we have until we lose it. Every morsel of food, the walk in this beautiful beach, I never throw out a piece of bread. If you take me out to dinner, chances are I may eat up your leftovers. That's really <laughs> pain for me. My daughter keeps telling me, and my precious grandson, Jordan, please let people know that beauty of mine. Come on, stand up, Jordan. Jordan, that's the best revenge. That's the best revenge, my kind. <clears throat> That's all. Not only I have three children, I have five grandchildren and three beautiful great grandsons. That's revenge, my kind. But I was not really able to have the joy and the compassion until I was able to return to Auschwitz until I was able to go back to that lion's den and look at the lion in the face, until I was able to somehow reclaim my innocence, assign the shame and guilt to the perpetrator, and finally forgive myself that I survived. You see, revenge gives you satisfaction, but I think it's very temporary. It just saps you from so much energy, but forgiveness believe me, has given me the ultimate, the ultimate spiritual freedom. So I, as I stand here in front of you today, I can tell you that I'm so blessed today that I can guide people from darkness to light, from prison to freedom, and to find that perhaps the biggest concentration camp is right in your own mind, and the key is in your pocket.
what keeps me young today, that I live in a present, because I can only touch you now. If you please like to hold hand in hand, we all have a little skin hunger, so please touch, hold hands. And I too believe somehow, as I am able to stand here, look at you precious young people, that you are the future. With Ted, you and I can empower each other with our differences and never kicking each other into submission because that would be the beginning, the end of the beautiful democracy that I came to this country for. So just remember, you can make a difference. And remember my mom's words <clears throat> that everything can be taken away from us except what you put in your own mind. So I hope that you will be very careful and very selective, the words that you can put in your mind <clears throat> so your life would be as beautiful as mine have become. And you and I can truly celebrate the beautiful gift that God has given us called life. Thank you. Did it okay? So amazing.